So I'll start with this one. When I look at value, the pick that surprised me going, dropping as far as it did for me was Miss. Well, it's not the face of the franchise, but it might as well be. And that's going to be Matt Olson. Um, I don't know if you guys have played with his face of the franchise card or if you've even watched streamers play with it. That card, to me, is better than Joey Gallo's face of the franchise card. Um, yep. I just... That, to me, is going to be the card on this year's game. Yeah, I've only used them in Showdown and BR, but that card is just disgusting. That guy is disgusting. His swing is good on this game. He's got the the attributes that you would look for, and I feel even as good as his ratings are, I still feel that he plays above them. Um, I thought that was a great pick to be able to get in the middle of the second round. Again, it's a guy in, you know, Olsen is... Let me actually pull up Olsen really quick here. Um, well, while I'm doing that, let me go back to the list real quick and talk about who I'm surprised won as high as they did. Oh, I think uh, I think that it was really interesting to see Josh mm. Donaldson go up as high as he was. You know, great pick. I think he's a great player. But um, same thing, right? He just had he just had one of his one of the best like resurgent years of his career. But like you were talking about earlier, is that his ceiling? He only gives you defense at third base compared to. You know, other players that were taken below him, look at, you know, Shoei Otani, look at Starling Marte, who gives you great defense in multiple positions in the outfield. I was very surprised, but I think that's kind of going with the meta of this year. The the power meta is back, especially with Perfect Perfect, that if you mm-hmm. feel confident with the player, I could see it. But I was definitely surprised to see him go high second round. The one for me is going along those lines. It's it's just hard for me to... He's got raw power, but when we talk about ceilings and floors, a very interesting pick to me was Quack Pack taking Mr. Stanton in the second round because mm-hmm. he just hasn't been healthy. If he is not able to get somewhat back to his, like at some point, his rating is going to have to go down. Yeah. I, I feel um, if he's not healthy for a decent amount of the season or when he does play, if he doesn't play well, I feel like he has to. Um, I know it's a three-year average. You know, Some people are really kind of surprised to see he's rated as high as he was. I feel like that three-year average kind of helped his rating stay up. Yeah, but he's definitely out to me. He's one of the first on the chopping block. If he comes out the gate slow, I feel like he's going to drop. And I won't say like, you know, harshly, but he's going to start that decline. And once your rating does drop, I you know from my experience, it feels like once that decline starts, it's hard to be able to get those get that rating back. I mean, mm-hmm. Ramirez had a ridiculous second half of the season after playing like complete garbage for the first half. And it took a just crazy second half for him to be able to just sneak back into diamond range, diamond level. So I thought that was a thought that was a, a a tough pick. I mean, there's you have the power now, but with the second round, I feel like your first three, maybe even four picks should be staples. You need to be what you are. You have to be an effective key component in my lineup, in my rotation, in my bullpen, whatever you're being picked mm-hmm. for. And that just kind of scares me um, that potentially, you know, that's a second round pick. And if he starts to drop, the value on that goes hard. And not only does it go hard, but you also lose value in being able to trade him too. Yeah, high risk. Like we we're talking about high risk, high reward. If, if you're able to, if he's able to, maybe this helps him right the the break helps him and he's able to come back and and crush the ball boom you get him kind of a steal for where he dropped but at the same time he comes back and you know not running for a month or two when he when he warmed up for spring training 
he tears something or, or pulls something and then boom, he's out even longer. I 100% agree with you. And I'm a Yankees fan. There is nobody out there except for David that believes in uh, Gene Carlos Stanton more than me. And I, I want to see him do well, but completely agree with, with all of the concerns that you have. And I'm just going to let the one, two other guys out there just to hear your opinion. So this is not a, the fault of the player because I thought that this was a solid pick, but I wish he had more value than he did. So the 29th pick in round two um, goes to Padres fan and he takes Yasmani Grandal. So here's my thing about Grandal. I think it's a great pick regardless, but I wish he had more value than he did. If pitch mm-hmm. framing was something that was in MLB the show, this dude easily goes first round because the effect yeah. that he has on your, your rotation and your pin, not just the bonus and yeah, we all know he's extremely slow, but he's got some pop from both sides of the bat. Um, and you don't, as a catcher, there's some things you just can see. Like, can you block the ball? Can you throw the ball to second base? I'll live with anything else. Not only does he do those things, he gives you contact from both sides, gives you that flexible bat that you can move, you know, throughout the lineup wherever you feel comfortable having him. But man, if pitch framing was something they had in the game, this guy would be amazing. Just imagine having an ace and getting a bigger strike zone just because yep. you have him. I might have picked him first round. I mean, not even just with your ace. We're, we're talking about the, the 25th round, right? Let's say that somebody, I'm just going to pick a random reliever, Adam Adovino is for some reason there, and, and he's having a bad year. Could you imagine if you get that extra inch or two out there with his slider, right? He might have been my first pick. Pitching is the most important thing to me when I play online. Now, custom leagues, I'm treating it a little bit different with the uh, with the draft, but if you can have somebody that not only affects every single pitcher that you have, but also gives you switch hitting ability and pop, I I agree. I wish he had more value because that is a that is a steal of a pick. Even even at where he got him, I was strongly considering taking Yasmani Grandal. I went with uh, DJ instead just because. I wanted an infielder more than I wanted a catcher. I looked at the catchers that were still available. And, you know, what a pick. I'm definitely agreeing with you. If pitch framing was a thing, he would be, he would probably be like an 89 overall. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And then the last guy that I just wanted to throw out you just to hear your opinion. So this is an interesting one. Because my understanding is he only can play one position. You can't put him anywhere else. Now, that's not to say you mm-hmm. couldn't pinch hit with him and put him in. But, Otani. Now, I've run into him a couple times, well, more than a couple times in events. <laughs> He's an interesting one, and here's the reason why I'm going to bring this up. I am a Cardinals fan, big fan of Tony LaRusso. And I know other people have done it as well. I know Madden did it with the Cubs. And there are some other teams that have done it in the past too. Um, Putting the pitcher in the eighth spot and essentially having to double lead off with your nine and one just to give your second guy in the lineup more opportunities to bat with runners in scoring position or on base in general. Otani is really unique because I, I just bring him up because I've seen some of the things that people have done online. I've seen people bat him fourth and build a realistic lineup thinking, okay, like you think I'm just going to put him fourth because he's got pop. No, I'm putting him fourth, but I'm building my lineup in a way that if I had to take him out, I can still be successful. It's just the, the spots are at different, you know, the power and the contact are differently made. I've seen some really unique lineups with that. Um, since he's off the board, one, was he ever under consideration for you? And two, if he w- if you did have him, where would you bat him in the lineup? What spot would you put him at? Yeah, so those are those are great points that you bring up and a, and a great question. So I, Otani is on my team, my Diamond Dynasty team. I have the Face the Franchise card. And 
I was definitely considering taking him in this draft, but I've been struggling with him at the plate a little bit. He does not hit lefties very well. And that was really kind of the nail in the coffin for him. I need, I need my lefty batters. Like you're talking about, they have a lot of pop usually, but I need my lefties to be able to get that lefty on lefty crime. And I simply wasn't getting it with him. I agree. I think that he gives you a very dynamic option. He's, he allows you to create your lineup in a different way. I have played around with him in the events, making weird lineups, trying to see how he plays, trying to construct it, like you're saying, with, with a contact guy immediately after him. So that if I do replace him, I basically just restart the order. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely an interesting player. I... I know that Blue says that he is going for hitting right now. That was why he picked some of the players that he did. And, I mean, name a better hitting pitcher than than Otani, if that's what you're going for. I think it, it gives him a lot, of, um, a lot of ability to manipulate his lineup, like you're saying, the ability to pull him in as a pinch hitter. That also is one of the reasons why I stayed away from him. They talked about the event energy. They talked about energy a lot this year. And I genuinely don't know how calling him in as a pinch hitter affects that, which is why I, I didn't go for him because I could totally see him being a an extra lefty bat in my in my bullpen essentially. But I just don't know how how that plays. I don't know how the game mechanic works of pulling him off the bench and if that affects his energy for the next game. Um, I think that it's a, a great pick. I think that if you're looking for a good starting pitcher, just purely as a starting pitcher, he gives you a very good fastball, a very good slider, a very good uh, split finger fastball. So great pick on that. And then depending on what he, what he's able to give you as a bat, that's just a bonus. Uh, my main concern, like I said, his ability to hit lefties and how exactly the energy was going to play were a big reason why I, I kind of stayed away from him. Was he ever on your radar or? Um, I'm not going to lie. He was, but only that way I know no one else would use him. <laughs> Cause I just, um, there's some players, um, cause he's a unique one. I liken it to, and this is no knock on blue at all. So blue, if you're listening, well, when you listen to this, don't take it, don't take offense to this. But it reminds me of playing Madden growing up and people playing with the Falcons online. Like I took Vic <laughs> because we had to have rules in place of what you could do at running quarterbacks. And I felt when you have a toy like that, the shiny toy, sometimes the shiny toy gets you in trouble. Because I know that I um, don't run with the quarterback, at least not like people generally do online. It would never be an option. I've seen that on, you know, recently with Lamar Jackson on Madden, where people like, hey, there's rules in place. And people just defiantly break the rules. Like, why would you why would you limit him? Because he can do this. Like, well, this is why we have rules in place, because it's not because of necessarily the play style. It's the way the game's made. Mm -hmm. Um, So I thought about it from that standpoint. He's in good hands, but yeah. initially that was my thought of, I don't know everyone in the league, so I don't want him to potentially get someone in trouble. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the reasons, like, you know, I almost want to take him early just to be able to keep other people out of trouble. That was my thought, but to here's use a, him, not so much. Here's another interesting player. I don't know if he's in the custom leagues. I think he's a free agent. But uh, hypothetically, I and this is because I don't think he's in. Hypothetically, oh, yeah. know how do you treat up. Pat Venditti? Yeah, <laughs> how would you treat him? I I might go for him honestly. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna lie. I would just because of how annoying it would be <laughs> with the given the. So I've I've talked about it some. The three batter minimum, people. Here are the three batter minimum, and they take it to literally at its words when that's not always the case. The key is you come in the game, 
and you face three batters as a minimum if you are unable to get out of the inning. Yep. So for me, that changes the way that I bring in certain players, whether it's righty or lefty, but it also has an effect on how I do my lineup too. There's some spots where I'm kind of okay with doubling up because the odds are I know I'm going to get a righty at some point later in the game. Do I feel comfortable hitting righty with these guys? If I do, cool, we'll put them back to back. But when you have lineups that are going to be left, right, left, right, or then you throw switch hitters in there, it throws all that off. So to me, I'm just like, I don't even really factor it in. Just bring in my best pitcher that I feel I'm looking at just pit selection now. Who can come in based on the way this person is hitting? If you're not hitting a changeup, I'm probably going to go to someone in my pen that's got a good changeup with other pitches so I can use those pitches to set up the changeup. Or, hey, you're having a hard time hitting a slider? Well, you better believe I'm bringing in a guy that's going to throw a slider, whether it's in, you know, lefty lefty or righty righty switch. Here comes whatever. Andrew Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to go with who the best is overall. I, I've noticed that I don't really care about the man. I'm going to bring in, you know, Brad Hand. But there's two lefties if I, they're just a third, you know, third guy's a righty if I don't get out this inning. I don't care. Like, I'm just going to, you know, do what I have to do. Bring in the proper guys, get those outs, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, good thing uh, Stephen Wright or Ryan Firebend or whatever aren't in the game, too. I would would have to uh, propose a rule that. Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me. Once I knew that they weren't there, we were good. They were not good. They they would have not been allowed. I can tell you that right now. No knuckles. That would have been my first pick. I'm a no cap, no knuckle guy. So those would have been if someone would have picked. Uh, this would have, you know, LOL, cool. So who are you really picking? Because they're not being picked. Um, yeah. And then I'll just ask you one last question to wrap it up. Two. One is a two part question. You just keep it simple if you want. Other than Yankee okay. Stadium, since you're a Yankee fan, ballpark you're looking most forward to playing in, ballpark you are going to hate playing at. And then just give me a player in the league that you're really looking forward to playing, whether it's first time, whether it's someone you've played before. All right. First, I love the new Globe Stadium. I've I've had a lot of fun. I did face the franchise with the uh, with the Rangers. It was a ton of fun playing in there, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun hitting the ball into the boxes the boxes are in there and there's people in there so when you replay the home run it's funny to to see that happen the stadium that i'm least looking forward to playing and luckily the person that has this stadium is hopefully nice enough where they're not going to do this to me i cannot see the ball at all at fenway stadium during the day something about my monitor something about the the angle that the ball is thrown at I physically cannot see the ball. I've lost every single online game during the day, regardless of if I'm playing my little brother, regardless of who I'm playing at Fenway during the day. I just literally can't see the ball. Um, the player I'm most excited to to play is probably you, uh, just because half the league I've I've played in either with my tournaments or I've played them you know, at different times, but I've never played you in a game. I think we played against each other in smash once, but I think it'd be fun. <laughs> it's, I, I think I've seen you play enough. You've seen me play enough in my streams. It'll be, it'll be interesting to, uh, to finally match up. What about you? Let's, let's pose the same questions to you. I'm sure you'll be asking these, but uh, how about you answer one of them for us in this video? Well, I'll answer the ballpark. Um, obviously, the one I am going to hate playing in the most is Wrigley, and here's why. <laughs> I agree with you on the lighting with Fenway, but Wrigley is a unique ballpark because, one, we'll see about when being included at all because that might be something that um, people may want not want in the game, and I understand that. We'll mm-hmm. see. Since we do have the slider to, to um, adjust that, um, I hate Wrigley for this reason. It's not because I'm a Cardinal fan. 
believe it or not. I hate that pocket in right field. I feel like no matter what I do, when I play in, in Wrigley, I have to have my best outfielder, at least fastest outfielder in right to account for that extra space there. It just plays weird, and I hate it, and I feel like every time I have, you know, when I play in franchise, when I didn't have Tyler O'Neill out there, the ball always found Chisholm, always found Martinez, because they I, they know, the game knows, like, oh yeah, these guys can't get to it. Triple yep. City. I hate that ballpark for that reason. Nothing else, just for that reason. Um, the You're one I'm the ball. That's where it's coming. <laughs> oh yeah. So hopefully, um, in a short season, you can only play a team once, and it's a random home or away. So I'm hoping that I'm home. <laughs> um, <laughs> the ballpark that I'm looking forward to playing in the most is my favorite ballpark, Oracle. It's. It's another one of those weird parks that plays weird for for lefty batters because you've got the big wall out there, as we all know, and you've got Triple Alley out there as well. But Mm -hmm. it's a really, really nice ballpark. And I feel in this sense, because the wall is so high and it's harder to hit home runs there, people may construct their lineup differently. So I've been kind of watching and I will be watching to see how the Giants form their lineup knowing that half of their games are going to be there does that Mm -hmm. eliminate power lefties when i play there do i maybe adjust my lineup to account for right field and that all so yeah i'm looking forward to play it's a really nice ballpark especially at night definitely all right well that definitely went longer than i was planning on pretty sure you (laughs) too sorry (laughs) no you're good it was a lot of fun Yep, I appreciate it. We'll have to have you back at some point later on, but uh, that'll do it for now. So thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. We'll have another guest speaker. Um, also, before I go, do want to plug Mr. Strikeout. He is a streamer. I will put his link in the channel if you did not know, or in the uh, geez, I, description. Thank you. <laughs> you can tell I don't do YouTube as much as I should. And also, he has a YouTube channel as well. If you want to talk on that really quick, give you a chance to promote yourself, and then we'll go ahead and call it. Uh, Sure. Basically, last year was my first year playing Diamond Dynasty. I got a lot of help from stream. I'm talking, I didn't even know how to how to switch where the players were playing. I want to give back to, to my community this year, so I've been really focusing on helping new players. So anyone that needs any help, let me know what you need help with, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to make a video on that. Oh, yeah. You got the Team Doctor series, and then every Saturday you know, on his Twitch channel holding the tournament. So a lot of fun times over there. Pizza time. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to get you back for that one. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, sir. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll, we'll catch up later. Yep, have a good one. All right.